All right, y'all, welcome back to another one on Spirit of the Outdoors. If you can't spot the obvious, we load it up. We're going to try to do an overnighter down here in the swamp. It's been raining. It may rain tonight. We've got our gear with us. Uh, we're going to see if we can catch a bow fin. However, there's a lot of fresh water in the swamp, which makes fishing of any species difficult down here when it's like this so but we're going to paddle around and see what we can do the water is a little bit swift in some areas now right where i just put in is kind of a backwater lake so it's not too bad right there but i'm going to paddle down here and we're going to check out a mound that's down here and i uh, tell you a little bit about it so hang with us Roscoe had never been in this canoe. He's a little bit nervous about this one. It moves around a little more than the other one. Uh, I have just spotted some chicken of the woods on the side of a log over here. We are definitely going to take that. Let's get turned around and we're going to go check that out. I spotted this growing way, way back. Y'all look at that. And there's a small one, but that thing there is huge. Look up there. Now, we're not going to harvest all of these because there's no purpose for it. That one is massive. These, however, we're just going to take probably one of these smaller ones, maybe two. We may pick another one on the way out. Take our little knife here. We're going to go in right under there, and we're just going to kind of cut it loose. See how that's very solid right in there? Nice, nice, nice. I'm fixing to show y'all something right here in this brush pile out in the middle of the water. You gotta look closely right directly in front of the canoe now. There is a rabbit. Right there. See him washed up in that? I don't know why he's hiding. Well, he took the swimming. It don't look like we're going anywhere. Mud hole. Green back. You gotta fight your way through him though. Pay attention to the bank on your left. And the water in front of us, of course. This little old mud hole ditch. Looked like it dead ended. Just keep watching. Paying attention to that bank on your left. I'm fixing 
fixing to turn you around. That is a mound. There ain't very many folks down here that know how to find it by water. Now there is that gravel road that I drove up. It goes right by the other end of it. Everybody can find it that way. But there's very few that know how to paddle in here to it. And you saw what we went through, that's why. It don't look like any of that goes anywhere. We're going to get out and we're going to explore on this mound. I want to film on it some. I want you to get to see it. There's a lot of speculation on how this mound got here. Now, we're in the middle of a swamp. It is an all low-lying area, water, uh, sloughs, creeks. It's relatively flat. Uh, and then down here, right in the middle, there's this gigantic hill. This thing is... It's anywhere from 50 to 60 foot tall. It's probably over a couple of hundred yards long right here, this one. Um, now, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the Indians built it. Now, the, the Choctaw Native American tribe that's here build Indian mounds. If you research them, there is a mound on the reservation or actually it's not on the reservation, it's on what used to be, I think, their reservation. Uh, it was a state park for a long time and then they finally give it back to the nation. Uh, but it is a, a mound that, that I think they classify as a burial mound, but I was told by a Native American that it was not a burial mound, that it was in fact hollow on the inside and they put the women and kids in it. So I don't really know. Uh, and this one, some some of them ologists, I don't know if they was geologists or biologists or what kind of ologists they was, may have been Scientologists, said that a glacier pushed this up. I don't know. Um, that would have had to have been back in the first climate change, you know. Uh, I don't know what kind of automobiles they had back then in them days to melt the ice when they caused that global warming and climate change. That may have been dinosaur farts done it or something. But uh, we're going to get out and look around. And there's some peculiar, you see there's a lot of layering to this sand rock. However, there are some large, large boulders up here on the upper end of this thing that I don't think Native Americans could have towed it and put up there. So the, the glacier pushing it up is a possibility, I guess. I mean, I'm not a smart enough man to tell you that, hey, the world was completely froze over at one time or it wouldn't. I don't, I don't know. don't really matter to me whether it was or it wouldn't. The one other option is there was railroad trestles built down here when they logged this timber back in the, I don't know if it was the 20s, 30s, or 40s, but way back there they hauled the wood out with uh, railroad cars. And I'm trying to, you can see this way down there to my boat now. 
sure. but there is a wagon road down one side which could have been built on it after the the uh, logging was done or whatever and the Native Americans that hunted and fished this swamp I'm sure they used this regardless of whether they built it or not because it floods this during the winter will totally flood and I'm looking at this huge log of light or not is going to be important to me for building a fire tonight and you can see way off down that hill there's a game trail kind of right down the front of this but you can look right here way off down that side people right here we are over 60 foot this is this is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of pushing a hundred foot tall right here it's a long ways I'm over the tops of trees that are broke off right out there and it is past 45 degrees it's at least 45 degrees down and then immediately right here it's rounded over it starts going back down with a little more slope on this side now as I spoke of about a wagon road hard to tell maybe on camera there's a slight impression that follows right straight down through there would have been a wagon road so hard for me to tell you what built this we're gonna go see if we can get a picture of some of the boulders I believe it would actually be the north end of it you can see the gravel road running it runs right along the end of it so if you're ever down here you can drive right up to this end I'm gonna show you these boulders though they right off this side over here now we may fall if we do we'll leave it on on video for you for your viewing pleasure <laughs> oh and I put my foot up here on it you can see that is a very large boulder no nobody toted that up here now I, I do understand that somebody's gonna say well the they built the pyramids back with, you know, so yeah, I, and it's, I guess, possible. But unlikely, in my opinion, there's nothing but mud around all of this. I just wanted you to get an idea. Oh, there's a, what we call a salamander. I'll cover him back up. I want you to get an idea though of how big this was, how tall. And some of this is old rotten wood. They look at and they may be snakes. I'm scratching around at it like probably a dummy. But uh I just wanted you to get an experience of this thing. It's down here. It's, it's uh there's a lot of people in this county that don't even know about this mound. Uh and I talked to the guy that, that manages this management area. We're on the Nanawarya management area. Uh, and they, like I said, they were, I believe it was geologists came and said that a glacier, they thought, pushed this up. So, you know, I, do you take that for what it's worth? I don't know. I guess everything's possible. Uh, but anyway, I just think it's very cool. And there's some more boulders and rocks I'll take you. And I don't know what kind of rock this is. All we have is mainly sandstone in this area. And you can see these several very large boulders here. So, and it seems like they're only protruding out. You can see those. We'll go over this way and come back down the other side I would camp on this you can see that up in there now that's what little my boy Brody would call a hobbit hole <laughs> every time we see where something's made it a hole in the ground we, we I tell him tell him it's a hobbit hole you didn't know I am a fan of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings but just so you get a view of all this now I'm 
but it's just cool them them moss colored rocks that's something that we don't have a lot of especially in this swamp Now I just wanted to set this tent or this tarp up because I've never used it. I wanted to try it out, but I did bring a tent. It has a rain fly. I probably won't use the rain fly today as I would like some airflow. That's why I'm partly why I'm putting the tarp up. Uh, two reasons to experiment. First things first, clear out anything that you don't want to be sleeping on. Been a long time since I've used any of this stuff. 
That tells me that I don't get to go camping enough. <laughs> I figured this was going to be a trip. Wrap uh, by my lonesome. Oh. My favorite thing in the world. Setting up a tent by myself. I like to do this so that I make sure that I ain't resorted back to cussing. If you don't cuss when you do this, you know you're good. You know the Lord's really pleased with you if you don't cuss while you're putting the tent up. In case y'all couldn't tell, right here I tied a bowline knot up here at this tree, and then I put a trucker's hitch at the other end. I do have a climate sleeping pad that I recently purchased. At 40 years old, I got this at Christmas last year, and then I never got to camp. This is my first camping trip this year, no second. I went to Tom Bigby once. We're going to try to go and gather some wood. Now, one of the things that you're looking for, I'm struggling with the camera to, to know what you can see. Up in there, this deadfall, you see dead leaves? But you see how that bent a lot before it broke? I'm looking for something that snaps a little quicker than that. This will, in fact, probably work. But... We, you preparing for your fire is going to eliminate a lot of struggles down the road. So we're going to walk around out here in these woods and we're going to see what dead limbs we can find. And I'll show you what I'm looking for here shortly. Okay, this may be one of the things we somewhat looking for. I don't know if this is dead. Yeah, you see how that snap? Make sure you can see. Look at these. See how that pops? Hear it? That's what you're looking for. We want all of this we can get. Now I'm gonna take it and uh, I'll break it up even further when I get it back to my camp. But we want all of this. And I, I wanna keep the different sizes. I wanna keep the smaller stuff in one hand and then I'll put the larger stuff in the other hand. And see, I'm just going through this top and see this is hanging up off the ground. This is not laying. There's plenty of wood laying on the ground everywhere. You see all of that? But that is saturated. It's been raining on and off for three days. Now, we hadn't probably had but like an inch of rain total. But slow drizzling rains is what we've been getting. And that will, in fact, soak everything laying on the ground. And then not to mention what moisture is in the ground, that's pulling it out. So all of this hanging up, I can, as long as I break that off, cat back to camp, I can, I can further break it up then. So I know where some of that's hanging. Let's look around. I don't know what this mushroom right here is. That is a beautiful mushroom though. Going on the side of that dead hardwood. I wish I'd have brought my mushroom book with me, but I, you can wind up with too much paraphernalia. I don't like to just overcumber myself. We used to play that game more wind and, and and your little man he couldn't walk no more and they would say he's overcumbered <laughs> here here we go again see dead hanging 
see it just hanging in this tree up off the ground this is what we're looking for now this is not my tender this will be my firewood getting started now right here that's pigs done that wild pigs so uh can i see my tent from here I don't know, I like the fact that I can't just spot it right off. Yeah, I do see it right out the, over that way. So this is in sight. And if I see a wild pig tonight now, I have a 22 pistol with me, a handgun, that will in fact kill a pig if you shoot him right in the head. You got to make a good shot. But it is legal in Mississippi to shoot pigs at night. There is no season. Anytime you see a wild pig, he's fair game. Here, and I'm and fixing to check out something else right over here that I've just spotted. Y'all, it's cool just to get down here and walk around. When you know kind of what you're looking for, it's very interesting. When you know what things are. You see this on the stump? You see this, people? Beautiful, ain't it? That is another chicken of the woods mushroom. We're gonna leave him there though. There's no point in me cutting every mushroom I find out and carrying them to the house or eating them. I've got more than I'm gonna eat laying over there, especially if I get a fish. And I don't really need but one fish. Hmm. Well, we definitely not gonna pass these up. And since Brody ain't with us, we're going to do it the right way. That way you don't get no... Now, y'all, I do have a bag in my bag <laughs> back there to put these in, but I done walked off from it because I was looking for firewood. But I spotted this group from way over yonder. Look at there. Nice. I'll take it. Yeah, I broke that one. It's hard to do this and and uh, make sure the camera can see what's going on too. There's a good many right here, but like I said earlier, there's no point in me picking. Look, these patches of them all there. They're all here. Look at that pretty one. I don't need but what I'm going to eat. And I've got that. I may pop this too right here out. It's hard to not just grab them and pluck them up. But there's some there. All oh, little ones all in here. But we three days of rain, I expected this. Uh... See them growing all right there, around them roots. Look at them all up next to the tree. All that is chanterelles. So we've got chicken of the woods. We've got, got chanterelles all right here in one little spot. Camp is right over yonder. I mean, we, we just kind of foraging around. So even if we don't, and these look, they small here. There's some more over there. And no telling what other mushrooms are edible here that I'm not particularly familiar with. Uh, there's so many species of mushrooms that it's almost impossible for one person to know every one of them that's available that you can eat in a given area. You just have to pick some of the main ones that you know you can find and, and learn them and then add to that as life goes on. So.
Because they wear me out more than that does. But I've got two pieces of wood that I can practice splitting on. I'm going to finish cutting me up some firewood here. And this is pretty dead wood, but pretty much what I need. Notice I try to cut outside with a limb between me and what I'm cutting. If I miss, I hit that. Got my leg. Get this back over here. This drizzling rain. Our canteen's down to about half full. So we're going to have to get some water. I do have a light. Roscoe's standing on the bank over there watching me. He thinks I left him. I told him, I told him when I paddled off, I said, well, I'll have fixed you a good place over there now. We'll see you later. <laughs> He's been running up and down the bank, don't know what to do. I told him I was leaving him. You ought not fool with that skunk. It's been four days, four or five days, and he still smells like a skunk. I don't think I'll ever get the skunk smell off of him. But you know you love a dog when you let him up in the bed with you and he still smells like a skunk. <laughs> but it's been peaceful because my wife took to the couch. She didn't like it too much. But I'd rather have that dog than I had her. He don't argue with everything I say. You fuss at him and he'll just stand there and look at you. You fuss at her, she won't go to mile and all back at you. I don't like that. In this boat, I'm telling you. I'm going to hire me somebody to just paddle while I fish and film. Anybody want that job? I'm taking volunteers right now. Does anybody want to just paddle a boat while I film and fish? It don't pay nothing. You just get the free entertainment. <laughs> and I probably fuss at you because you'll do everything wrong. But you can't be scared of critters. Because we'll paddle right up in amongst them moxins. They'll be dropping off trees and we'll go right on in them. See what knot I be tying. And I don't remember. I think this is a trilene knot. But I done decided it is smart to go through this. Well, doggone it. I tie my jigs and stuff on with a loop knot. Alright, now you see how that's... Y'all hear it thundering? Roscoe's laying over yonder on the bank looking at me like, You ready to go? <laughs> I don't buy had enough. If you ready to go, I'm ready when you are. 
he don't know it, but we're going to ride the storm out. Uh-oh. I bet that's Marie Laveau. Wanting to know for sure if we're coming home. And we know. <laughs> no, we're not coming home. We down here for the duration. What we gonna fish with now, folks? We done we done took that off. What's in there that we could we could uh 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 we that we ain't tried something just like well, what about I don't know about what that is. It's just, I like lizards. I like lizards. I hope it don't come one of them hurricaneators like Jerry Clyde we used to talk about tonight while I'm down here in the middle of this swamp. Dark where these dark lines are, and I don't know if you can see this, but right here there's dark veins of that sap, that's fat wood, and there's a dark vein right there. That's what I want in here. That's gonna be what, what lights this fire, right here. That is a dark, almost transparent of uh, resin. I'm gonna lay this down. Now. We're gonna see if we can get a fire going over here, people. And we're gonna try to do it without using our lighter. Thunder roll. Now remember, a fire lay hasn't got to be pretty. It's got to work. I just need a hole that I can drag them twigs up on. situation like this this is what this stuff is prepared ahead of time for that is a cotton ball soaked in Vaseline this is a cotton face pad saturated with wax. And 
This is emergency fire kit. Always have that with you for times like this. Did y'all turn it off? Y'all, everything is getting wet very, very fast. We probably, if we would have got the, uh, and I did have the uh, the pine rasm burning for a second, but the rain steadily hitting it, it wasn't gonna burn long. Okay. But we do have fire. Like I said, if I don't know if it recorded or not, but I said that I, I was wanted to do it without the cotton balls and the the cotton swab. But it was just raining on it, too wet. And apparently I'm not that good, huh? Is that the way you want to hear? That's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> Now I am going to lay this other wood up here just because I need it drying out, if nothing else. If I don't want it burning yet. So, little tips like that may help you. And I don't know how we're going to cook our mushrooms yet, y'all. But this right here, cotton balls, slopped in Vaseline, and then these are the little round pads, wafers I call them, and I melted wax into them. Essential fire kit. DIY do it yourself. If y'all want to see me do a video on how to build them, let me know, but they's already a hundred of those videos out there so you really shouldn't need me to do one on it. keep some iodine with me to purify water so I can't boil it as a backup but just joy pure and it's easier to pour it into there because it don't like to just sit itself up supposedly can drink directly from this cook clean you seen what the condition of that water is and with all the fresh rain and as much water as down here I feel pretty good about this water anyway But I carry some iodine in case I can't boil it or I don't have this for some reason, whatever, which I've always got this. I just wanted to show you this. It's a joy cure. It's kind of like the Be Free, except this is only like $13. I don't think they got this brown color anymore. 
came in this little bag. Ain't worth a whole lot, probably, but it was in it. Well, Roscoe, do you like chicken of the wood? And I do have a skillet, pan. That little old satchel I brought, it's pretty much got everything I need in it now. We're not lacking on no whole lot here. We may have to go refill our teapot here. Set that up. Oh. I gotta get I don't wanna have to put my fire out. Maybe that'll work. Cook back here. Yeah, it's pretty warm back there. And I have never cooked chicken of the woods this away. It may not be fitting to eat. So we're going to say we're going to just cook that. And I do have some seasoning to put on it. We'll put some seasoning on it. Oh, we got we mm, we got hot sauce, boys. We can we got Louisiana hot sauce. We can make anything fit to eat. And then this is not just lemon pepper. I've said this before, but in case you're new to my channel, take all of your salt, pepper. I like lemon pepper and garlic salt. Uh, I like cayenne pepper. I like Tony Satcher's. I mix whatever seasonings I'm going to put on something all together in one shaker, and I'm done. I get ready to cook. I just shake it on there. I ain't got to carry two or three bottles because I'm camping. I'm not cooking gourmet of the woods. But now, doggone, it'll still be pretty good. But I'm going to put the same seasoning on whatever I'm cooking. I wanted the fire to die down when I cooked, but I don't want it to go too low. I have a problem of, of getting a, too much flame and burning stuff up, boiling stuff over. Kind of a habit. I like a big fire though. I differ from a lot of people in this bushcraft. They want to build a little old bitty fire, and there's times that you need to do that. There's definitely situations where you don't need a roaring fire. I get it. But you can bet, if I'm in a survival situation and I get a fire going, I'm going to pile wood on it, buddy. I am not going to sit there with no little old bitty fire. There is too many trees out here for me to be worried about conserving wood. These blow downs everywhere from these storms. And I realize my situation may be different from yours and where you at. And that's a, a legitimate thing. And you have to be mindful of that. But it's like these tarts. These guys that preach these eight, six by five tarts, seven by five, or six by six, six by five, whatever these little bitty tarts. I don't even know what size they are. And y'all know who I'm talking about. They preach them. Oh, that's all you need. 
it don't weigh no more to take up no more space for me to tote this 10 by 10. I can set this 10 up under it. And then I got an awning to set out in front of, in front of, with a chair. I mean, I ain't toting nothing smaller than a, a 10 by 10, unless it's a military poncho, and that's in an absolute survival situation. I'm trapped, I was hunting, and they ain't gonna make it back, and I gotta spend a night, and this is all I got. And then, you can use this 10 by 10 for a poncho if you need to wrap it around you. I, you know. <laughs> Just my philosophies. I like to gripe. I like to gripe about things that other folks do and swear that that's the best way to do it. And, and I'm sitting there cringing the whole time thinking, no, nah, hand, that ain't what I'm going to do. Like this mushroom, now I hadn't caught no fish, not none whatsoever. And I brought a little food with me, and I don't know what this thing tastes like raw. Somewhat like a styrofoam cup. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work. I do know why them chanterelles taste. And I got a pot. I just don't have no grease or butter or nothing like that to cook them in. So, probably what I'm gonna do with them, I'm gonna saute them a little bit in that skillet. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this, folks. That's going to be mighty hard to eat. It's got a good taste on that edge that cooked. I might need to get it on up in the fire. Where's my spatula? Y'all laughing. I really got a spatula. It's got a leather strip glued to the back of it where I can sharpen my knife. This will probably be the last thing I attempt to film, but I've got these creamy potatoes. And what I've done right here is heated up some water on here. And this is potato soup. I have done this in this bag, and I told y'all I had a spatula. Oh, them's good. I licked that off, man. Them's tasty. But we're going to make them even better. In here, this is what I wanted to show you. The chanterelles that I picked. And I put a little bit of my tea in there. And uh, I got to get this in there. Now, that's going to be the tricky part. Everything down here is a challenge. But I wanted them mushrooms in my in my soup. I was gonna get you a little look see down in this sack so you could see what it looked like. What I ought to do is just dump it all out in this plate, I reckon. It is a soup. That's what we're gonna do. But you can't see it in that sack. I can't stir it in there for nothing else. But it's potato soup, and I'm not making soup out of it. I'm making more like mashed potatoes, because it's potatoes. And why not? Now, I have got to add a little bit of... And Roscoe's all wound up, y'all. There was some kind of critter out there. Did you see how that looks? Oh, I need, to, I need a little bit of water in it. And then we can make coffee out of the rest of our water here. Be careful of pouring that there in your lap now. It could get... Mm. Hot. Hot. Hot.
We're gonna let that sit right there and cool off of her. There was a critter out there that got Roscoe all kind of wound up. He's beside himself, folks. He said, Row! I think it's a bobcat or a coon in distress or something. I got hot water going off in my tea there. Mm -hmm. One more thing I'm going to show you before I cut the camera off. And then I'm not going to attempt to record nothing else tonight. This is what I'm going to be eating with. I bought this at a yard sale. And I had to do some cleaning up now on the old spoon part of it. But it's got a pair of scissors and a knife and it's Japanese made old critter corkscrew it's sort of like a Swiss army knife but different I got my fire built back up this morning I modified my coffee thing here you know, from a cotton string to something a little more reusable because I didn't want to have to tote the cotton string so what I do is I've got a small piece of wire this was a garbage bag tie that I burned all the coating off of so there's no galvanized or plastic or Nothing like that on there. Now what I'll do is I'll dip that kind of down in the water a little bit to create a bowl. Just so that I can pour the coffee. You can pour it in your lap or whatever. Now I like my coffee strong and black. The reason I like this tie, is I can kind of wedge that under some of that and make that stay down in there. And I know y'all couldn't see a lot last night what I was doing. I could take this knife with this hook on the end of it I can somewhat handle my stuff here now sitting directly into that fire like that is probably a terrible idea because it'll sit there for right now but then when it burns down You have a problem -o. <clears throat> Yeah. Y'all look at me good. I don't fold these rags in half. I fold about a third over. Makes the back part a little longer. My preference. I refilled my canteen this morning with my Joy Pure filter and that water is as clean and crystal clear. I'm impressed with it so far. Now it may fail me at some point Oh, but now so far I have used it a good bit. The water is, it rained most of the night last night. Or at least through till I went to sleep, which was before midnight. And I think it quit after that sometime. I did wake up over in the night at one point. Roscoe, he was trying to take his sleeping bag away from me. 
I told him he could sleep on dirt. He didn't bring his own. He had to do it out. No, that's not what I did. He got in the middle of mine. Him and his polecat smelling self. And I slept with a polecat right up under my arms. Because after whatever that critter was late last night, it squalled out out there. <laughs> we called it the wild woman of the woods. What they always told me as a kid that it was. So she was out there somewhere last night hollering. I don't think she was none too happy about us being down here in this remote location. But it's actually, I think it was a either a screech owl or a bobcat. I don't really know. I didn't go. I didn't go out there and try to encounter it. I just snuggled up with O22 pistol and O long blade butcher knife and said, "If it comes in here, we're gonna have a come to Jesus meeting." So that's how that went down, and it never showed up. So I don't know what it was. Oh, I was gonna show you in the daylight my little deal that I. And I'm sure you can't see, but it's got a spoon on it, folds out, a pair of scissors. Probably be uncomfortable down in your pocket, but perfect to put in a bag, you know, for a backup. Because, I mean, you're going to tote some kind of eating utensil. Why shouldn't it be a cool antique that's got some blades on it, huh? Corkscrew. I decide I want to go back to being an alcoholic. I can get me a bottle of wine. That ain't never going to happen. Oh, uh, an old blade, it's Japan made, so we call them them Japanese. But we're going to, uh, I like this long blade I was talking about. Um, it's got some fishing equipment inside of it. I put a saw on the back. I've got a smaller blade in the holster, which is just a kitchen knife that I sharpened really good. But it's German steel, German made. It's a good knife, uh, and it's full tang. Um, but I put a gut hook in it that I can move these pots and different things around with, uh, the saw, and I welded this handle on. It's a really sharp knife, and I, I can chop with it. It's thick, heavy steel, and it's well made because I made it. Uh, I've got my ferrocium rod in there and a magnesium block, so it's pretty good for what I do, but thank y'all. We're going to get this, uh coffee made we're gonna eat our oatmeal drink our coffee enjoy the morning for a minute but we're gonna pack all this stuff up and head out of here thank y'all for watching my videos remember the best way to do things is the way you like to do it we'll see y'all next time on spirit of the outdoors